Jake here from Social Flight, and we are just finishing up a project, and I thought that this would be a great opportunity to teach you guys a little bit about um, uh, connectors and how to uh, uh, route cable from uh, a GPS, COM, or NAV antenna to uh, instruments like uh, the Avidyne 550, the Lynx transponder, things like that. So basically, we're using this RG400 cable for our NAV, COM, and GPS. And um, in your aircraft, you may have the older black cable, um, but this stuff, the RG400, are uh, much, much better. And we are using um, these uh, standard connectors. They're called the BNC connectors. Um, it's kind of like a quarter turn. And um, that's what we're going to be using on um, uh, our comm, our uh, GPS, things like that. So um, we're going to start by um, uh, cutting this cable. So now there's there's really a bunch of different steps when it comes to cutting a cable and you really have to make sure you're, you're following the specifications for your connector. And there's a bunch of different ways of doing it. Some people um, just use a razor blade. Um, some people use uh, uh, special tools and we actually made our own tool um, or modified this tool to meet the specifications of our BNC connectors. Um, and uh, it's basically a, a three bladed uh, tool uh, they're all at different depths. Um, we can actually adjust that on the back and it doesn't do a great job, but um, we have it where the tolerances are enough that uh, if it doesn't cut enough, we can just use a little razor blade um, and get the rest off. But um, the reason why there's um, a bunch of different depths is you have many different parts of this cable. You have the, um, the main copper part of the cable, which is in the center. And then you have a non-conductive material right outside of that. You have a shield outside of that. And um, then you just have a kind of plastic polymer uh, casing that goes around the rest of the cable. So there's really four parts of this cable right here. And the goal is to connect different parts of this to different parts of the connector. So the first main cut is going to be um, cutting all the way through up until that center conductor. Um, and we have it set to a specific um, uh, depth in order to do that. The next cut is going to be cutting the shielding as well as that outside polymer. Um, and all it's going to leave is um, the non-conductive material and the uh, center conductor in there. It's going to cut off the shield and it's going to cut off this outside casing. And then the very last cut, the third cut, is only going to cut the casing on the outside. It's going to leave the shield. And what that does, and you'll see, is so that center conductor, we're going to end up uh, crimping on a, um, a little pin, which you can see right here if the camera can show it. So this pin will be connected to the center conductor. It's going to go through this hole. and. Um, uh, that's going to be in the center of this connector. The non-conductive material is going to go inside of the back of this connector and as you can see on the, the very last layer is um, that shielding and the shielding is actually going to go over the back side of this connector. And what we do to actually uh, attach this to the cable is we have this sleeve that's going to go on top of the shielding on top of this connector and you crimp it all together and that's what's gonna it's really just holding on to the to the shielding and so that's pretty much how this goes um, we're gonna work at it sometimes it's not perfect so we're gonna have to do a little shimmying to make sure we get each layer off safely um, but that's pretty much it one thing to look out for is sometimes the shielding can go a little too far and um, uh, start touching the center conductor or the um, the pin that we end up crimping on and that can lead to a lot of problems. So we're gonna make sure that uh, the shielding is back enough and goes over the entire connector. So we're gonna slide on that sleeve. We're gonna line up our tool. Make sure it goes straight this time. Okay, that should be enough. 
I don't know if the camera can see, but there's three cuts that are going on right now. One here, one there, one right below there. And then the goal is going to be to slide them all off. Okay, there we go. So you can see the three layers. We have the se center conductor. This is that's the main conductor that all the data is going through. Then we have that non-conductive material in the center, and we have the shielding on the outside. So the first step is to make sure we have our pin right in the center. Okay, that looks pretty good. Enough. So there's a little bit of cushion and it goes through um, uh, that little hole right there. You can make sure that um, there's enough of that conductor inside of the pin. Okay, so now the step is we're gonna make sure that we can crimp. Okay, so now the pin is on that uh, uh, conductor, that main conductor in the center, and we have the sleeve on, and we can now go towards attaching the BNC cable, or the connector, and you're going to see how I'm pushing it over the shielding. The whole thing bottoms out. And the shielding is going over the connector right there. Now we slide the sleeve up. And we've actually found that there's a little trick that we've been using. You can do a tiny light tap and tap it on. So now we have the sleeve shielding connector and it's time to crimp that whole thing on now we're going to do multiple And this is a finished connector right here. You can see the pin on the conductors in. Sleeve is crimped, going all the way around the shielding. Last step, we're just going to heat shrink on this black heat shrink. It's going to make it look nice. And we're going to move on to the next part of this. So on the other side, we're going to be using something called an SMA connector. And the reason why we're doing that is we have a splitter right here. And um, the main reason why we're doing this is we only have one uh, GPS antenna uh, controlling two uh, G units that are using GPS. We have the um, Avidyne IFD 550 and we have the Lynx transponder. And the reason why we can do it this way is in the STC of the Lynx transponder, um, it specifically allows us to uh, use this kind of splitter um, to bring two uh, GPS lines into one and send it to um, a single GPS um, antenna. And um, how these cables work is they actually uh, produce the power or the, the um, uh, devices like the 550 and the Lynx um, produce the power to the, of the antenna or to the antenna. And what you want to do when you do a splitter is these are special splitters that are only using um, power coming from one of the devices. So if you look, um, you can't see it from the camera, but one of them says DC blocked, the other one says DC through. And what we're ending up doing is um, allowing the Lynx transponder to provide the power to the antenna. And the IFD 550 is going to be um, just receiving the uh, GPS signals. So um, 
These are smaller connectors. They're called SMA connectors. Exact same process, but just with a smaller connector and a smaller pin. So we're gonna start that process right now. I'm gonna slide the sleeve on. Now I'm gonna slide our shrink wrap on. Now let's make sure that our cuts are the right size. It looks like it's, it is. We're gonna do a pull test. It looks pretty good. So now we have our connector. We have the sleeve on. It's ready to be crimped. Rotate it just to have a nice and even crimp. Okay, I'm actually going to do one more. Okay, that do the trick. It's all crimped on. Heat shrink goes on both sides. We have our GPS label here, and we have finished our jumper cable. This will go from the Avidyne to our splitter. We already have the jumper from the transponder to the splitter and we've already finished the, our uh, RG400 cable going from the splitter all the way up, sorry, all the way back to the common antenna. And the common antenna is actually a two-in-one. We're running both of our comm uh, and our GPS. So we're getting actually two data points from the same, uh, same antenna, um, very aerodynamic a lot easier to install and uh, we're very grateful to them for helping us with this build. Stay tuned for more videos. Uh, make sure every Tuesday at 8 o'clock you sign in to Social Flight Live. We've had hundreds of guests and we can't wait for future guests and we have um, also our Social Flight mobile app and free um, socialflight.com website to get hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of um, air shows and events and pancake breakfasts. Uh, tons of fun things going on and make sure um, that you guys just keep flying and I wish you all blue skies.